Hello, this is Dr. Chobsey, and welcome back to another episode of Beginner's Biology, where I hope to introduce you to basic biology content, either as a study aid or for general information. This video is going to look at some of the various units and magnitudes we can commonly find in biology, giving this video a more mathematical theme. Before I do, though, I just want to remind you to leave a like on this video if you feel it deserves it, and to subscribe to the channel if you're new. So, to start off, what do I mean by talking about a unit? Well, a unit is a defined concept that we use to compare different things that we see in the world around us. Sounds complicated? Well, we use a lot of these units every day, and you probably don't even realise it. If you want to see how far something is away from us, we measure it, with a common unit being metres. If we are weighing something out, say, sugar for baking, we use grams, and so on. These units take an action that we want to do, and compare it to a set standard to make sure that we can communicate what we are trying to measure out to others. As I mentioned, we use a lot of these units every day without realising it, and many of these are used in biology as well. Common examples of this include distance and weight, which I mentioned previously, and use metres and grams respectively. Biology generally uses the metric system for units. You may recognise litres as the unit that we use when we're measuring out liquids, such as water. A combination of seconds, minutes and hours are used to measure the passage of time. Temperature is another very important concept that we measure, as we normally can't stand being too hot or too cold. In biology, Celsius is the generally used scale to measure temperature. Biology doesn't just use these units, and examples of more biologically significant units can include Moles, which measures the number of molecules of a particular molecule that is present, usually in the solution. Molar is used to measure concentrations of solutions, which is the number of molecules present in a given volume of solution. Base pairs is often used to measure the size of an organism's genetic material and also the length of genes. Daltons is often used to measure molecular weight of proteins, and sieverts is an example of a standard unit for measuring ionising radiation. Measurements that we use in life have a wide range of values, ranging from very large to very small. This can lead to either very large or very small numbers, with lots of individual digits present. To make these numbers easier to manage, there are a series of magnitudes that are often used to keep numbers within an easier to use range, typically between 0 and 1000. This concept is as simple as a relationship between metres and kilometres, where one kilometre is equal to 1,000 metres. As for why these are easier to use, I'll ask you, which of these you think is easier to use? 246,000 metres or 246 kilometres? I personally would prefer to use 246 kilometres as it's easier to say and an easier number to keep track of in calculations. Now how about these? 65.7 litres or 65,700 millilitres. Again, the easier one to use in real life is 65.7 litres as it's a smaller amount of numbers to keep track of. These magnitudes use what is known as scientific notation to display numbers. This essentially multiplies the number by 10 a certain number of times. This is kept track of by adding times 10 to the power of x after the number with multiples of 3 often being used for this x value in biology and other sciences. This x value is the amount of times the number has been multiplied by 10. As an example, we will look at a kilometre. We know that a kilometre is 1000 metres, and this number can be obtained if we multiply 1 by 10 3 times. To save space, this 10 times 10 times 10 is written as 10 to the power of 3, which is also known as cubed. Using this, we can see that 1 kilometer can be referred to as 1 times 10 to the power of 3 meters. This again is a long thing to say and write, so the times 10 to the power function is replaced with an easier word to use as a prefix to the base unit. In the case of 1000 or times 10 to the power of 3, the prefix used is kilo, or k as an abbreviation. This leads to the unit becoming kilometer, kilo meter, instead of 1000 meters. 
For smaller numbers, the x value is a negative number. What this means is, instead of multiplying by 10, you should divide instead to get to the true value of the base unit. Our example for this will use litres and millilitres. Our base unit of 1 litre is equal to 1000 millilitres, or rather, 1 millilitre is 0 0.001 litres. To get to 0 0.001, from 1, we need to divide it by 10 three times, or to keep it simple, divide by 1000. As with large numbers in the last example, there are a range of prefixes to keep these magnitudes easier to use. For this example, times 10 to the power of minus 3, the prefix is milli, abbreviated to m. In biology, the x value previously mentioned tends to be a multiple of 3, so that's plus or minus 3, 6, 9, etc. These different levels of magnitudes all have a particular prefix and abbreviation associated with them, up to 21 on each end of the scale. I'll go through these now, starting with the larger prefixes. We have already spoken about the 10 to the power of 3 magnitude, kilo, which represents 1000 of a base unit, and uses the symbol k as an abbreviation. The next used prefix is mega, at 10 to the power of 6, and uses the abbreviation of a capital M. If we use this prefix in our meter examples, then we would get a megameter, which would be 1000 kilometers, or 1 million meters, although this is not often used. This prefix is most commonly used in computer systems, where it is found used with the unit byte to make megabyte. Following on from mega, 10 to the power of 9 leads to the prefix giga, with subsequent prefixes being terra, peta, exa, and zeta at 10 to the power of 21. Lower magnitudes include the previously mentioned milli at 10 to the power of minus 3, with 10 to the power of minus 6 using the prefix micro. Micro is currently unique in being the only prefix to have an abbreviation that uses a Greek symbol, with the Greek letter mu being used for this abbreviation. 10 to the power of minus 9 leads to the prefix nano, with subsequent prefixes being pico, femto, atto, and zepto at 10 to the minus 21. As you can see from this table, these numbers can be either very big or very small and have a lot of zeros, which take time to say or write and will be hard to keep track of in calculations. These magnitudes and associated names make these numbers easier for us to use in real life. Biology commonly uses magnitudes between the base unit and nano, with a few instances of kilo and pico being used. So how would you convert between these magnitudes if you had to? And trust me, if you end up doing exams in biology or any other science, you may have to do so. Well, the calculation is as simple as multiplying or dividing by 1000 to go between each of the commonly used magnitudes that I've mentioned. If you're looking to convert to a lower magnitude, say from micro to nano, as shown by the blue arrow here, then all you need to do is multiply your number by 1000. If you're going to a higher magnitude, for example, micro to milli, as shown by the red arrow, you then need to divide by 1000 to get your new value. If you want to make a two-step jump in magnitudes, all you need to do is follow the procedure twice, multiplying or dividing by 1000 and then by 1000 again for a total multiplication or division by 1 million, not by 2000. And that brings us to the end of this brief look at units and magnitudes, and if you managed to make it this far, then well done. As always, thank you for watching these videos, and if you would like to subscribe to the channel or watch some more of my videos, then use the links here. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.